Hello and welcome to the second ep- second episode of uh, How to Climb. So this week we have Box Hill, which is in Surrey again, 5% at 2.2k average, as you can see. And it's probably, well it is definitely the most popular climb in Surrey Hills, mainly because it was used in the Olympics seven times, I think, for the elite men's. Um, and yeah, it's a really nice climb, 5% pretty much the whole way, like no real ramps at all. I mean, there's some ridiculous thing that says it ramps up 10%, but that's absolutely rubbish. It's so smooth, perfect tarmac, it's like European tarmac. So here we go, this is my effort. I'm not gonna lie, this is absolutely rubbish effort. I was just cruising up, not really going hard at all. Um, this is, I think the total is like four was gear for the whole thing, which is, I know, quite rubbish. But anyway, I think my best up here is 541, um, and the pros doing about 430. Like around that 430, 440, and I mean the draft does make a big difference, but they are hitting some numbers up this climb. Um, but yeah, so it's a nice climb, pretty fast. The draft definitely helps a lot. I've never really actually done this drafted um, like properly, but even going slow speed, so like this, like 16 k's an hour, 20 k's an hour, like you definitely can notice it. I think my fast time the average was like 25 k's an hour. I think, um, so it would have been nice to have someone to sit on, but I had a massive tailwind, so I can't really complain too much. But yeah, it's really like, the tarmac, that's one thing you notice know straight away. It's like European tarmac, it's so smooth and you just like, you roll over it so much nicer, and compared to like the rest of the roads, which are really dead and like, grippy as they say. It, it's a massive change, and I really enjoy this climb. It's great for intervals, I love it. I do a lot of intervals, five minute, 10 minute intervals, because you can start a bit lower down, um, finish a bit longer so this is just the the bit i'm showing you now is just the box hill 2.2k segment i think it's called and that's the main segment that most people really compare on because that's the steep part because basically after after the segment it goes on for a bit of a flat part which is a bit boring not really not really the full climb uh but yeah so it's nice it's got some hairpins which is incredible for a uk climb because normally they just go straight up uh, no hairpins no nothing so here we are, this is on the main stretch, it's annoying because the, the I was supposed to have like the track so you can see like where, what's coming up and what's gone behind, but it didn't work, uh, which is a bit annoying, but anyway, so we have all the metrics as usual, uh, like power cane, speed, heart rate, all that stuff, my max heart rate's like two, 201, 202, so 160 is like chilled, a um, bit about the saddle action, um, and yeah, we're just cruising on. As you can see, very popular with cyclists. Cyclists always up here. I've never actually been overtaken on this hill, which is which is quite nice. I mean, to be fair, the standard in the UK for some reason doesn't seem to be very high. Like, it's a bit odd because the, the times are good, but I never seem to find these people who set the good times. Um, but I do cycle during midweek, which I guess most people don't work, so they can't do that. But yeah, I think I'm five. I did. Oh, I'm trying to think stats-wise. Um, where I am in this, I think I'm like top a thousand out of eighty nine thousand. It's like one of the most popular climbs in the whole world, I think. Um, in order to climb this climb fast, what you need to do, namely, just have have someone who can pace you halfway up. Choose a day with a massive tailwind. That's uh, always useful. Uh, not as useful for this one because there's a. It's like it's not in one direction. But if you have a, a, a headwind coming on up this part, you're probably gonna have a good time because most of it's going in the opposite direction. So. There's the long part which we just did, which will be a tailwind, and the bit we're just going to go around, which is also a tailwind. Um, in order just for anyone to actually get up, I think, uh, no matter what your ability is, I'm pretty sure you can get up this climb as long as you have like just normal gears. I mean, it's like it's the only thing that could be potentially seen as hard is because it's a bit long. But like, I think I did this in eight minutes today at Fort Worth's Bikino, and I mean, like, I think most people can probably do that, and even like. I mean, you can still, you can probably get up it, like, just not very comfortably, I think anyone any can get up it. And plus you get like rest bites and it's just, it's just quite chill really, the whole climb. Uh, the thing is, it feels nice, like, when you're, when you're really, like, going fast up it, like, you feel like you're absolutely zooming up it. Because um, it feels similar to, like, a six or it seems like it's a steeper climb when you're actually doing it for some reason. I think it's just, like... I don't really know why it is, but it just does. So when you when you're sort of going 25k now, you think we're like absolutely flying on the line, um, which is always a nice feeling. The time is super smooth. It's a bit annoying with the speed bumps, but it's not too bad. It's all you really have in the UK. Um, 
well not in the UK actually, London, there are really very many climbs that are long, I think there's one in Surrey which is about 10 minutes, like proper climb, um, this is like a 10 minute climb, you go from the very bottom, but there's quite a lot of false flats and like, it's not really a proper climb, this is the main climb here, um, and yeah, I, I, I think it's, it's just like a solid climb to be honest, there's not much more to say, um, just keep a good cadence. You probably want to go slightly lower than usual, maybe more like 90, because you sort of want to keep the momentum. I think that's one thing I've definitely learned when doing this climb, is that like keeping the momentum is it's quite different compared to a steep climb, because on a steep climb it's more like uh, you sort of hold the momentum, but once you get to 10%, you just sort of, it's okay. Well, on this one, it's like, if you start spinning, it's quite easy to lose a lot of momentum, like, especially if you suddenly start dropping down the gears when you feel like you're a bit tired, it's better just to sort of grind a little bit still 85 games or so and then you can you can sort of go a bit faster i normally have it in the big ring obviously today i didn't because i was going really slow um but i think you just have to make that effort like if you're going full gas yeah keep it in the big ring but otherwise it's quite easy to start grinding on this climb if you're like oh, i've got to keep it in the big ring and that's when it's just not very comfortable um i think it's actually probably one of the best climbs to everest but maybe because it's very easy like you wouldn't need to make massive changes on the gearing and you can do it. I guess the only thing is it'll be a long distance because it's not very steep. But it'd be a good climb to Everest and then maybe I think some people have done it already but I can't remember what time it was. But yeah, we're getting close to the end. Uh, this is normally if you're going full gas this is where it really starts to hurt. Um, but as it gets a bit more sheltered generally the wind's not as bad so you sort of pick up a bit of speed. Um, and I think it's a good climb, I think everyone should do a box hill, not the most challenging, and it's also quite useful because it has water at the top, so if you're doing a loop in Surrey and you don't live near there, which I don't, um, it's quite nice to fill up some water just before you go home, um, make sure you're well hydrated as always. I often I warn myself if I do a hard intervals and I do what I want to set out to do with a little like fanta or something at the top, which is always nice for the old morale. But yeah, here we go, last sort of hairpin I think is just coming up up here. Can you cut the corner on most of these? Yeah, because you can see. So like, you can see pretty much around the corner and you can cut it pretty nicely, which is good. It's a fun, fun little climb to descend as well. I mean, there's only three hairpins, so it's not really an alpine descent, but still good to practice, especially on the, the one which is, um, the second hairpin, which is quite steep and quite narrow. So we're getting to the end. This is where you sort of push on. Um, it says it's 8%, 9%, I don't, it's just not really true to be honest. Um, and it starts to flatten off just as you get around this corner. And that's when you can really get it up to like 35, 40 k's an hour as you're sprinting it in. Nice climb. Uh, and this is pretty much the end over the speed bump around the corner. It's annoying there aren't really any group rides up here, which really smash it. Um, I've yet to find any really, but maybe, maybe I will in the summer. It's a bit miserable now, not many people are on their bikes. But alas, here we go, sprinting it in, 200 watts, um, and this is the end, just that. Um, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed my little commentary and my ramblings. I uh, hope to see you next time, and as always, give us a subscribe.